Hello and welcome back to the lecture on Applied Econometrics and we are talking about the topic multicollinearity. Now we have talked about many aspects of multicollinearity, we have talked about uh, what multicollinearity is, how to see if there is a multicollinearity and what are the problems if we have multicollinearity. Now we will see few more techniques to understand if the multicollinearity is present. Now as such you do not have a test very specific to understand multicollinearity like we will see in case of other problems like heteroscedasticity or autocorrelation, we have specific tests to understand if the problems are there. But in multicollinearity, you sort of, sort of is a, is a, is a problem of degree and you sort of try to understand, you know, like uh, from different ways with different ways if there are problems of multicollinearity. So, one, one other way to understand multicollinearity is to see, you take simply two variable, two exponential variable and you see the pairwise correlation coefficient as simple as that. And if you see the correlation coefficient is very high, you usually say that you have to look at these two variables because there is a high correlation coefficient. As such, we take any correlation coefficient which is more than 0.5, we consider there might be a problem of multicollinearity because they are highly correlated and because the correlation coefficient is more than 0.5. So, let me actually do this, let me actually script to sort of show that you know if there are problems of multicollinearity. So, in the way we have taken the variables there it has there has to be problem of multicollinearity okay uh, because we have taken the same uh, exponential variable with different functional form so let's see we can actually we write the code corr for pairwise correlation coefficient we can take all the variables so you can you can take only the x variable you can take all the variables so it's okay to see so, it will give the relationship among all the different variables. So, this one is giving the relationship uh, between y variable and the x variable, x variables and here we get one to one relationship among the x variables. Okay? So, here of course, ln lever, ln lever. So, it will definitely give you one, but here correlation coefficient is one. Here ln capital, ln lever, it has a sort of high correlation coefficient 0.96 labor and ln labor of course it will be high like 0.8 and capital ln labor again is very high 0.73 so essentially as per our criteria what you said that 0.5 is the cutoff all the cases you will see that there is a high multicollinearity problem so you have to see you know which one you you need to keep which one you need to drop okay so perhaps you you from your you know knowledge you know that uh, yeah, there might be some relationship between uh, labor and capital, but it is more likely that these two functional form ln labor and labor and ln capital and capital, they are creating the problem. So, you might actually want to drop one of those variables. So, you know, uh, maybe the capital and labor you want to drop and you might want to keep the ln labor and ln capital. So, that is one way of looking at uh, if there are problems of multicollinearity. So, you simply run a uh, pairwise correlation coefficient. The other, other way, so let me write it down. So, one way is running a pairwise pairwise correlation coefficient coefficient and in the previous video you have seen the symptom was say low actually there are two two symptoms we discussed uh, so one was let me write down here. One was insignificant beta, significant beta or B2, insignificant B2 with high R square, right. In the previous class, we explained this high, high R square. And the second problem was high sensitivity, high sensitivity V T. And here I am saying that we simply take a pairwise correlation coefficient okay, and we see uh, what happens there. The other way of doing it is running auxiliary regression, auxiliary regression. So, what is auxiliary regression? auxiliary regression is nothing but you run regression equation for each of these x variables. So, let us say I have my x variable, I have a regression equation where I have x variable x1, x2, dot, 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 xp okay? and I want to essentially see how each of these exploratory variables are getting determined by other 
exponent variable. So, let us say beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 and up to say beta p, p p or beta p x p plus some error term. Similarly, you can write x 2 is equal to let us say beta 1 plus beta 2 x 3 and so forth beta p x p plus error term and you basically run its regression equation for each of these exploratory variables. So, essentially if I have say p exploratory variables, so I will actually run p auxiliary regression equation because I am trying to explain each of these variable with respect to the rest of the other exploratory variables. So, that is a little cumbersome process and though it is a good way to understand if the if there are you know relationship among these variables because what we do here we simply try to see uh, we simply try to see that if where the first first thing we check for each of this regression equation for each of this regression equation what we do is we check if the if the f statistic is significant okay because we know the f statistics is talking is statistic is talking about the joint significance of the model if all the you know if whether the null hypothesis is beta 1 equal to beta 2 dot dot up to beta p is equal to 0 or my alternative hypothesis is either of this either of this beta coefficient is not 0 right. So, that is one when we use the f statistic to understand the joint significance of the model. Now, if this, uh, there, the model is actually explaining, so then there, there might be some sort of, you know, we have to be careful that there might be some problem with multicolonality. And the second thing we need to see is the value of r square, r square. If the r square value is high, so then that means some of the variables, uh, some of the x variables are actually explaining the dependent x variable. Now, you know, corresponding p value for all these different beta coefficients to understand if the regression equations are actually really making sense and if actually one of those uh, or, or different uh, x variables are actually related with the rest of the x variables, right. So, this is how let me write that beta coefficient. So, these are the things you actually need to check when you uh, check the auxiliary regression equation. But the problem as I said is that you know it is it might be a little cumbersome large number of explanatory variables. So, you cannot run so many different uh, auxiliary regression you have to run for each regression you have to run it separately. So, that is why, why we do something called you know what you have learned already is called VIF. We actually have a command uh, called VIF uh, that we use to sort of understand the variance inflating factor. So, for auxiliary regression how it calculates is that 1 by 1 minus r j square ok. So, where r j square is the is the r square value r square value for jth regression ok. So, the concept remains same when we used uh, you know small r square the correlation coefficient we simply took the relationship between two explanatory variable because we had two explanatory variable. But when we have multiple explanatory variable we do not use the you know uh, the row or the small r uh, x uh, x 2 x 3, but instead we use the capital R. So, that is what will give me the value of the V i f. So, in case of the auxiliary regression equation and when we actually calculate V i f, we actually end up calculating 1 by 1 minus r j square ok. Now, if the r j value r j square value is pretty low, so like it is let us say it is 0 0.2. So, then my V i f is going to be 1 minus 1 by uh, 1 by 1 minus 0 0.2 1 by 0 0.8 which is essentially uh, I think 1.25 right. So, which is actually ok I mean you know like if the r square value is low the vif is go also going to be low. But if the r square value is high if the r square value is high so that if that means the model you know the, the x variables are actually explained by other x uh, other explanatory variables. So, then you know the v i f value is going to be very high. Let us say if my r j square is going to be 0 0.8 instead is going to be 1 by 1 minus 0 0.8. So, it is going to be 5 ok. 
So in general, we take a VIF value which is 5 or above, so that is the R square value is 0 0.8 or above, so that we consider as a problem because then that means the, the R square value is very high and we really do not want that. So when I have the VIF value is equal to 5, we then actually take that uh, into uh, consideration saying that there might be the multicolonity problem and in our uh, previous regression, if we simply type VIF, it will provide the VIF value here. Okay? And we will see in all the cases, uh, we, we have a very high VIF value and it is quite obvious because the, that is the reason we have chosen this equation where we actually show high multicolonality problem. But we will see in other, other equations, other examples that the VIF value is you know, varying and we have to kind of sort of use the VIF values to understand whether we are going to you know, further dig deep into the multicolonality problem looking at the VIF uh, values. All right, so with this we end this uh, <coughs> lecture and in the next lecture we are going to talk about R square value and correlation coefficient. There are different types of uh, uh, correlation, uh, partial correlation, semi-partial correlation. So we are going to talk about all this in the next lecture. Thank you.